Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio, featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies. Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From brand new audiobooks such as Galaxy's Edge, Black Spire, and Star Wars Myths and Fables, to our blockbuster movie tie-in editions, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Start listening wherever audiobooks are sold. This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 301. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. I'm your host, Dan Z, drinking, actually, tea out of my One Nation coffee mug because, as you can hear, I have a bit of laryngitis, but that is not going to stop me from talking about the premiere of the final ever trailer for a Skywalker movie, The Rise of Skywalker. I'm here joined by your favorite co-host, let's bring in Corey Club and Tom Gross. Hey, Tom, hey. how's it going? Hey, hey, how's it going? Bummer, you're not feeling very good. That's, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I know, I actually feel fine. I just, I don't sure. sound fine, but... You know, you can't not turn on the microphone for something like this. We got to talk about The Rise of Skywalker. I watched the trailer. Let's all talk about how we watched the trailer first before sure. we have kind of our top five. Well, Corey, I want you to go first. You want me to go first? Okay, cool. Yeah. So I told my kids uh, that it would be on a little after nine, you know, and usually I watch it first and I, you know, come with my phones that are they're usually in bed by then. And, um, I thought, oh, I'll just show on my phone. I thought, no, this time I'm going to do it differently because I, I can plan a little bit. And I'm going to just you know wait till 9 o'clock. And if you have kids, you know you put them to bed and they're still awake. So uh, I went upstairs about 9 when I saw it drop. Um, and I said, all right, guys, let's come on downstairs. I, I grabbed the boys. I peeked in the girls' room and they were asleep. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just you know show them tomorrow or whatever. And so we get settled down in my office in the second in the basement floor here, and then all of a sudden, like pitter patter of feet above us, and I was like, "Oh, okay, somebody got up." <laughs> so Ashton came down, and we dimmed the lights down and made the screen my full screen uh, view on my computer and watched the video, uh, watched the trailer, uh, and we all cheered at the end. Oh right. wow! I, I love. I can just picture that happening. Tom, That's what fun. about you? That's cool. Well, I was. Uh... I believe I probably was driving home from uh, picking the girls up from gymnastics when the when the trailer dropped because I got several texts right in a row. So when we got home, we uh, got the girls some dinner, and I went upstairs, grabbed the uh, iPad, and I said, "Girls, let's sit on the couch and watch the trailer." So, so we, uh, yeah, we we uh, cuddled up on the couch and and watched it and ood and odd. And I said, "You want to watch it again?" And uh, my eight-year-old says, I'm good. I think I've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like it is. That's all. Wow. And so Kaylee and I, that cut Kaylee and I finished. Yeah, Kaylee and I watched it again and, <laughs> And we did. A, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I try not to do this, but I mm. I did a little stopping and rewinding and starting and mm-hmm. pausing and hey, I recognize that. that. Hey, yeah. what was that? You know, we did a little bit of that. So. Good stuff. I love it. Hey, that that the whole family thing is great. See, for me, Mason was already asleep because it was past his bedtime. But I recorded Monday Night Football just so he and I could watch it tomorrow. And I think I'm going to pretend like it's the first time it airs so we can share in the excitement together. Because I knew he wouldn't want to miss this. Sure. But, you know, bedtime is pretty important when you have, you know, when you have kids, as we all know. <laughs> so I got ready. I turned my phone on airplane mode so that when people were texting me and and all my notifications were going off that I wouldn't notice them because I didn't want to be distracted. Mm-hmm. Made sure the dog was already out, you know, so she couldn't ring the bell saying it was time to go outside and go to the bathroom. I had to get everything, all my ducks in a row because I didn't want to be interrupted. Last time I watched this thing. So I sat on my couch in the basement, drawing the surround sound. We got a 70-inch TV. We are ready to roll. And it hit. And uh, we'll talk, of course, in plenty about the details. But while I was watching this, my ears were legitimately tingly. And I had this incredible adrenaline feeling. And I thought, this is the end. This is the end. I'm never going to have this kind of feeling again for this kind of a thing. 
and I just pushed that out of my mind because I just wanted to drink and everything that happened. And when it was over, I just thought, I got to talk to the guys. I got to <laughs> talk to the guys. So yeah. here we are. We're going to record. Um, we try to do sort of a top five, and they're not in any particular order, just kind of five things that stand out for us about this trailer. And I've got them, I've got them in my brain. I haven't written them down yet, but I'm going to see where the conversation goes. So, Corey, let's start with you. What's the first thing that stands out for you for the Rise of Skywalker final trailer? Yeah, so for me, uh, I really like that uh, that voice over there in the beginning. I think it was Poe that was talking. And we see Ray. She runs through the, the jungle there, and then she jumps across the ravine. And then the the scene kind of flips to her. Uh, I think she's on some kind of a, a inside of a ship or something like that, and she, and she lands and heads on to the side. I thought it was really cool imagery. I thought it was really cool transition. Uh, it totally caught my eye. It totally reminded me that that – she is full of power, and uh, she definitely has those kind of those we'll kind of like the like the parkour skills. I guess we saw in uh, the Force Awakens, kind of her skill to navigate between um, different uh, obstacles and whatnot. So it was cool to see her in action again. I agree. I you know um, just to build off of that, I there are so many times, so many images array in this uh, trailer in my eyes that I was like. I, I feel like she's train. I feel like she's still training, you know, when she's, mm. when she's running and she's got the blast helmet on that she drops at the beginning and those uh, training droids or, or drones or whatever are following her. There's so many places. I'm like, I don't know. I, I felt like this. Well, I, I don't want to say too much, but I felt like this, this uh, trailer took me to the beginning and to the end all at once, uh, you know, and she's climbing that, that scene that you mentioned where she's climbing, she jumps over the ravine, but then they pop her mm-hmm. into, uh, into some sort of ship or something. I was like, man, reminiscent of, of the beginning. Oh, um, of course, the wagons. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but it's so, I'm sorry, Dan, you probably wanted to say something about Corey's uh, observation. No, all I wanted to say was that when I was watching it the first time, when Ray runs off uh, from off camera, and makes that step. I jumped. Yeah, it was very quiet. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of fun. Uh, Tom, what's your what's your top one that you noticed first? Not so top, gonna, but in the first one. Yeah, my first one is, um, and I always I always bring this up when we talk about trailers. So why not on the final one, uh, Dan? You're talking about like sitting down. This is the final. This is it. This is episode nine. This is the end of the Skywalkers. So the the thing that really always gives me that like internal sense of finality is is the score. And when um, when the Star Wars Rise of the uh, Rise of Skywalker comes on at the very end of the trailer, I just I like I I keep thinking this score cannot have any more finality to it, any more finale. And then just that, those final chords, those final fanfare notes at the, at the conclusion, just, I mean, if I, I mean, I, I'm afraid if I was sitting by myself watching that for the first time, I might've had some tears come to my eyes, but I had my kids with me and we were excited. And so <laughs> it didn't, but that, I don't know. Do you ever feel that way? In, in fact, yeah. on so many of the trailers, I think how could how can John Williams top himself with that like final blast of the chords of Star Wars? And this one t- topped them all. And it just oh, it's so powerful. It gives me goosebumps. It was it was um, it's always interesting when you see the music for these trailers because you don't know if it's something where they've remastered old things of someone else did some of the arrangements for it. I don't know. I look forward to finding out more about that. Yeah, I agree. So my first one, I was a little surprised when I saw this because of course, you know, for years we've talked about, gosh, do we want to watch the trailer? Do we not want to watch the trailer? Because I've, I've said many times in the last Jedi trailer, which I love, it gives a pretty big reveal where Kylo Ren is about to blast the Raddus with her mother, his mother right there. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a major point of drama and tension in the movie. Then the trailer gave it away. But, and I, at the time, I said, well, I'm not going to watch any more trailers. But then I find out this is coming out and I can't not watch it. I can't <laughs> not talk about it and watch it. You know, people have been asking us about it for months. So I watched it and I felt two things at the same time. One, nothing happened. We got the final trailer and we don't really know anything about the plot of the movie. We know that Ray uh, has some internal conflict. We already knew that. 
we know that she and Kylo Ren have a very muddy, unusual, unorthodox relationship between the two of them. And we got some of that, but we didn't learn anything. And at first I was like, oh, come on. I finally convinced myself to watch this and you haven't given me anything. But then I flipped the page and I thought, no, this is brilliant. This is exactly what I want. Just like an end game. I don't know anything. I have some amazing visuals, which I'll talk about soon, but it, it was restrained. I mean, it's not going to go down in the pantheon of greatest star Wars trailers ever. That's still the Phantom Menace trailer, but hmm. it was, uh, I'm just in awe of the fact that it didn't really tell us very much at all. And to be honest, the second time I watched it, I liked that even more. The first time I was like, gosh, am I underwhelmed? Or is it just how I am the first time I always see something brand new Star Wars? And, and it was that, of course. The second time I'm like, yeah, this is great. I, I don't really know anything. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah, Dan, I think that's a perfect way to put it. I think I felt similar to that in the fact that like, okay, this is it. I, I guess I, I'm expecting something to kind of like shock me or go, oh, really? What's this? You know, I didn't, I didn't get that. But what I did get, and this is my second thing, is moments. I got moments of, oh, you mentioned this, Tom, too. Like this is the, the last Star Wars trailer we'll get for a Star Wars uh, Skywalker film um, that we that we know about. That that these moments are going to come up. These these characters we lived with forever are going to grace the screen one more time. And the one that stood out to me was C three PO. That his his line of uh, <laughs> one last look at my friends or look, something like I can't get it right, but uh, I want to take one last look at my friends uh, one last time or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that just oh man, that's isn't that isn't that so true for us as viewers looking at our friends one more time? You know, is this you know what's their adventure going to be this time? And he put it so plainly and and, and so eloquently, obviously. Um, but it, it's so true. These moments are going to come up through this film and we're going to realize, oh gosh, this is the last time we see this person or this is great to see them again and in and, and a new way, but also uh, for the last time. It's, 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 it's crazy to think about that, you know? And that's what the trailer kind of did for me is kind of help me that transition. It's going to be, it's going to be like uh, losing part of, you know, a fandom in a sense, like it's going to, it's going to evolve and change. And, you know, it's, I mean, going to be people going to deal with it a certain way. And I think this trailer is just uh, kind of the first taste of what we're going to be uh, feeling coming out of that movie theater. Well, it's kind of unusual, too. That I mean, if, I would love to talk to the person who, who cut this trailer and put it together. I'm sure it was J.J. Abrams. I'm yeah, sure. Very possible. But yeah. when it when that happened, it was about midway through. Mm-hmm. Everything kind of paused and slowed down. And yeah, P.O. was looking, taking a last look at his friends, which is obviously very meta. Looking very at all, yeah. the audience because they've always been the kind of the 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 viewers in a sense right him or an r2 they've kind of been kind of the ones that have kind of been uh, kind of i guess i don't want to say it i don't know how to say that you could represent better than i can they're kind of the um the the fans the from their point of view yeah 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 something yeah. like that so we're all seeing it from their point of view in a sense too you know so it's interesting to see that come to light here yeah now and, and at first i was like Gosh, why? Why the pacing of this is not ideal? Why are they slowing down the action? But then I realize they're just kind of putting the, their hands up, saying, "Okay, everybody, breathe." Yeah, this is serious. <laughs> and then it also looks like they can three PO like some legitimate character moments too, which is nice. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and especially I feeling like the last two films three PO's been in, but hasn't been in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm-hmm. the fact that he 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 may have at least apparently he's going to have something to say um and maybe we'll actually get to hear what he really wants to say maybe that was right. it okay. um let's see your I second one to, pardon oh yeah my second one i want to talk about uh one of the voiceovers and i don't i don't really have much to say about it other than it made me really and i didn't I was so wrapped up in the visuals that I didn't catch the voiceovers the first time through. So the second, t- the second viewing, um, I was really listening to the words that they were saying and, and telling us. And this one really stood out to me. And, I'm, uh, and it is the emperor's line where he says, long have I waited. Mm-hmm. And now your coming together is your undoing. And all I could think was when he's in the throne room with Luke 
and they're challenging one another and saying, your overconfidence is your weakness, your faith in your friends is yours. And that for some reason that, that came back to me and I've, I have no idea what it means, but I thought that was such a powerful statement because when, when we leave the last Jedi, the goal is to bring the resistance together, to, to pull all the resources, to pull every single contact and pull it together and hear the emperor saying, I had planned that. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get back to that one. <laughs> Same. My, right. my, my second one is also a voiceover. I think, I, I think I caught it the first time, but I know I caught it the second time. I think the voiceovers go, I think it's Finn mm-hmm. and then Poe and then Luke and then Leia. I think that, and then of course the Emperor's in there and there's no in doubt the about on his voice is, mm-hmm. but my second one could easily be the first is, and I don't have the exact line yet, but undoubtedly it'll be something that's part of my daily quotes for the rest of my life is facing your fear is the destiny of a Jedi. I love that so much. I, I talk about that all the time with my students and my children. Uh, the Just this notion of we are our own worst enemies. And when we get out of our own way and embrace our fear and don't let it conquer us, then we've really come to something really important, really powerful, reached our full potential. And it looks like a lot of this movie is going to be about Ray's internal struggle to do just that. And it very much carries over the message in The Last Jedi you know, the fear of failure, you know, is, is something we should embrace because it's okay to mess up. It's okay to make mistakes. And whatever Ray's fear is, I mean, part of her fear we saw in the last Jedi is that she's not good enough or that she's not enough because of her, the mystery of who her parents are. <clears throat> and the fact that they're going to encourage this and give us those moments, I thought was wonderful. That, that stuck out to me, quite honestly, more than anything. And that was cascading through my mind as I watched the trailer all three times that I watched it. Yeah, it's the, this thing is, I, now I'm thinking about this, this, this trailer is bigger than that we're talking about this and just, it, it's bigger than I think it is. You know, like we said, oh, it's not as telling as we'd like it to be, but I think it's bigger than we think. If you go back and watch it now, maybe a fourth time, I'm sure I will. Um, it, it's It's so interesting to think about this and and talk about these quotes because you guys are bringing up things that like oh i heard him say that but i didn't really think about that or i didn't it didn't soak in i think it's because we just get so wrapped up in it and i I know i felt that was same way when with the celebration and i know tom and i sat on the the floor of the the presentation area watching the trailer for the first time on our phones just trying to get a, a glimpse of something and that then was the the newest thing was the emperor's laugh um I did that trailer and coming into this trailer, I knew I was like, I need some more emperor. I need to kind of know what's going on. I need some answers, which we always say that. I think that's my third thing. I'm going to go with the emperor. We see a, a short glimpse of him. We obviously hear him talk. Uh, we, we see the, I think it's his, his back or something like that, but um, he's very present again in this trailer. I think that's another great aspect of this and star Wars and bringing it back around to, um, these motifs of um, the evils is triumphing and once again, and it has to be taken uh, taken down in a sense. Uh, the emperor has always been the mysterious force. I know for me as a fan, that has always been like, who is this old guy? You know, who? What does he have to do with anything? But he's obviously more powerful than we ever believed he would be. So for him to see a return again, even this in this trailer is is great. I think it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's mysterious, very mysterious uh, what's happening, what's going on um, along the way here. So uh, there's something that's going to, that we're going to find out, I think in this, in this whole film, that's going to really blow our minds and really kind of make us go, wow, you know, this is interesting, you know, I, and I, this just kind of cements it for me, the, the, the mysteriousness of the emperor showing up again. But I think I think I'm gonna go back to one more thing is like you said, Dan, um we didn't get much much answers out of this and I was okay with that. Like I wanted more Emperor, but this was just enough to, to whet my appetite a little even further. Now I don't feel like I've seen like I tell my friends at work, I haven't seen that much. I wanna make make sure I wanna do wanna overdo it and try to digest everything and break everything down. Because I want some I'm so surprised I want to have some fun. And this was a good trailer that with the Emperor's uh appearance there, just kind of really nicely playing up that idea. I will say that I, I'm not watching the trailer anymore. 
Oh. Nope, I'm done. I've seen it three times. Okay. Third time I already started to be feel not as is like, oh, and I don't want to lose that feeling. So Dig into it. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. Tom, you want to say anything about what Corey just said before you uh, <laughs> before you give your next one? Oh my goodness. That's like saying there's a box of hostess ho ho's up in the closet and I've had three of them. I am not <laughs> having another one. That's right. impossible. <laughs> Once I make my mind up, it's done, baby. <laughs> impossible uh-huh. uh, for me anyway um you know what i okay both of you said it now and I, I i completely agree with you and that is the the this didn't say this didn't tell us much but it did confirm for me one thing that i i i don't know how you could have a movie without this but it confirms for me and this is going to lead to my third point um and that is they're successful the resistance, the 12 people sitting on the Falcon at the end of the last Jedi, they're successful in raising a, uh, a force. And again, I, I don't know why I would have ever thought that they wouldn't be successful, but this confirms that, Hey, they found a fleet, they got friends and, and that kind of thing. So what I wanted to talk about, and I'm, I'm just going to bring it up. It's the Easter eggs. I just, I, I was looking for them I, and I was hoping to find some things, and I found exactly, well, I think exactly what you want. So if, if you will mm-hmm. hear me in talking about the Easter eggs, um, well, well, I don't know. If, I, I don't even know if I'm using that term right. The things that I thought were cool that were snuck in that are from the past. Yeah, sure. so that's the, first is, the first is um, the, uh, the Corvette at the opening of episode uh, four, A New Hope, flies over your head with the Star uh-huh. Destroyer blowing up behind it. Um, how about the Corvette flying above our head, uh, scraping the top of the forest? Was that powerful or what? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, and I, and I just very thought, much. Oh gosh, another Corvette flying over my head in episode nine. How awesome is that? And then the scene where the Falcon is dipping down in front of an entire ragtag fleet. Did you see the ghost? Yes, I'm going to talk about that pretty soon. <laughs> okay, so the ghost is sitting off to the right, and um, our right on the screen, and right behind it, Kaylee, Kaylee nailed this one. If it's what I think it is, I'm pretty sure behind the ghost is, if it's not, it's a ship that is just like the Colossus from Resistance. No way. Oh, it's a triangle. No way. Triangular up and down ship. Oh my gosh! I hope that's true. See, good thing you're not going to watch it anymore because now I that, know. Yeah, yeah. don't watch it more damn two months. <laughs> well, I was getting a lot of, of stills from this. I'll have to look at. Those. I mean, I was I was just inspecting that all that entire fleet to see what we would what 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 is there like who's left, and and Kaylee goes, "Dad, the Colossus," and I said, "What?" Oh man! And she pointed, and by God, it looks. I mean, if it's not, it looks like the Colossus, and it's right behind the ghost. If you're looking at it still, well, okay. So, Lucasfilm sent me a bunch of pictures. I'm going to look. Oh, did they? Okay, yeah, good. Why you're talking. <laughs> so anyway, I, I just I was looking for that kind of stuff, and I, you know, and so in those space battles, you know, most of those star destroyers, there was some speculation. A lot of the, in one of those star destroyer shots from was it the I forget what the what's the middle trailer called where they had back to all the other movies and then they finally get to there's a name for that oh, one the d23 one yeah that one oh this is there real was, that there was a this is over that's it there was a shot of the star destroyers and and everyone was speculating that those were not first order star destroyers and that they were imperial star destroyers not taking anything away from that speculation because it is what it is but i looked really closely at the side shot where they were i have space battles in this one and i'm pretty sure at least in this trailer that's a fleet of first order star destroyers. All right, I got the picture right here. Do you see it? Ooh. I I see. I think I see what you're talking about. I'll I'll send it to you. Or I'll actually I'll tweet it so everybody can look at it and see what they think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that I mean, how cool would that be? They're out there. They're out there and they support the resistance. And so we don't know what the conclusion of season two will be. In fact, will the season two of resistance be over? It it won't be over by the time this releases, right? Uh, I, I don't know that we know. To be yeah, I don't know how many episodes they they said, but anyway, that was my number three. That's a really good one, and you taught me something I didn't know. All 
Okay, I had to cough, so I pushed the mute button. Got it. My uh, my next one is how visual this thing is. One of the things that JJ is good at is making a film look beautiful. I mean, look through the filmography of everything that he's done. You know, Mission Impossible, The Force Awakens, yeah, you know, all kinds of stuff that he's done throughout his illustrious career. And it's like a, a gorgeous painting, all these images, all these stills. And there are Easter eggs here, undoubtedly. And I'll talk about that later as well. I know people are going to be excited about Kylo Ren with wet hair strolling through this thunderstorm. I mean, there's a lot of symbolism in that. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. I I think that the throne, uh, the Emperor's throne, I'm assuming that's his, mm. was pretty cool. Uh, and I saw this on Twitter, too. Uh, some of the, the visual effects guys. But it also kind of struck something in my memory, and I, and I checked my making of Return of the Jedi, and sure enough, that the Emperor throne, Imperial throne of the Emperor, is just like the concept art for the throne of the Emperors on the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. Hmm. And I think it's cool that they're reusing uh, yeah. things like that. And if they, they hold serve, I'm not going to ruin you know, the mission statement here, but if they hold serve with some of the things that Lucas had planned for Return of the Jedi... Uh, that kind of lines up with what we hear at the end. Boy, are we in for an incredible treat. That, that's all I'm going to say. Come back to me on December 20th, and then I'll tell you more. About <laughs> you have thoughts, apparently. <laughs> more more to think about, huh? Yes, yes. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, moving on. Um, the next thing I'm going to go with is that sticks out of my head from this trailer is um, there's a, a scene... And it's kind of montage is going through. We see Kylo Ren and his and his mask and everything, and Ray, and they're both swinging down with their lightsabers and they're smashing uh, some structure. I don't know. I don't really don't know what it is. Um, uh, it, I it, it's an interesting moment, um, knowing kind of their history, what we've seen in uh, the Last Jedi, um, and the, uh, from what I understand, from what I I get from the Last Jedi. Kyle Ren is, is Mr. Bad. He is like full bad, full dark, just going to blast everybody and everything. And to see this moment happen is interesting to me. It's very interesting. She, you mentioned, Dan, that she, uh, Kyle Ren and, and Ray have a very interesting, um, not so, uh, I don't want to say natural connection, but there's, there's something there that's, that's different. And, this is just a weird and odd scene for me to see this play out. And I'm, it raises questions for me. I, what are they doing? What's what's happening in the scenes? They're uh, smashing this, this, this structure. I have some thoughts of what it is, but I'm not going to speculate. Um, um, but it's interesting for me to see. I think it's just them working together. Uh, we also see them battling on top of the the raining, raining uh, planet, uh, and our raining planet, the raining ship there with the, the storm going on. So there's still conflict, right? So there's a conflict that's going on. And I just want to know what the relationship is going to land on, what's going to happen, um, you know, in this film. And it's just it's interesting to see all these things go by that are good and bad and just like the struggle in, in the in the chaos that's just going on in this film. It's, it's pretty, it's kind of beautiful. I mean, in a sense that it's seeing this happen. Um, but it, for that, for me, that was the next thing that kind of sticks out in, in my head. That's, that's a good one. You made me think of about three other things. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I feel like that. Um, every scene with the two of them just makes me more confused, quite frankly, um, because you see them in that physical conflict. You see them in that that appears to be that they've made uh, that they've whatever that dark shape is that they, they hit it together um, in some sort of a collaborative effort. And so I'm, I'm thoroughly confused as to what we're going to see there. Um, and so the conflict is, that's good. I like the way that that has set that up. Um, let's see. Oh, now I'm just going off my memory here. I guess one thing that I'm always, I, I've always enjoyed about Star Wars movies and this one is uh, – this trailer and the others have um, just continued to reinforce that are the multiple settings. And, Dan, you, you alluded to this earlier. But uh, – but and, and, and so they seem to be, in this movie especially, I suppose, 
um, no, not necessarily just this movie, but they, they seem to be so symbolic. And so as I'm running through my memory of the trailer, uh, I guess in addition to the uh, the other trailers that we've seen, you know, we go from a, a desert planet, which we, we typically know what that means um, in a Star Wars film. But then uh, it opens up in a na- natural uh, setting with the ravine. And then we end up in a destruction, a destroyed mechanical setting um, that she jumps into that, Corey, you let off the show with. Um, and then it seems like every time we hit something that deals with the Emperor, I really feel like I'm in sort of some sort of a wasteland. Um, whether it's a dreamlike wasteland or just flat out a wasteland of some sort. But we know the importance of each one of these in a Star Wars movie. Um, you know, the nature and uh, um, the Jedi and then the mechanical and the contrived of the uh, of the Sith or the dark side. Um, but one thing I really liked that I that the one setting that I haven't mentioned that I saved for last was is the raging ocean. Um, and we see what I don't know if it's a final conflict or but we see conflict between light and dark there with Ray and uh, Kylo Ren in this raging ocean. And it just, I don't know. I don't know what, what to make of it. And I, I'm, again, we're not speculating. So I just find that to be really interesting. It's a beautiful uh, setting for yes. their conflict. Um, and so I just wonder with the nature and the raging of it, what, what that means for the force. So uh, while you're while you're talking about that and making me think about things in different ways, Scott Mendelson of Forbes magazine just tweeted out that according to Adam Tickets, the ticket sales in the first hour of the Rise of Skywalker uh-huh. have sold more than any movie in the company's history, including Endgame. Really? Yeah. <laughs> now this is just Adam <laughs> Tickets. You know, there are a lot of you know, there's Fandango still, there's a lot of other places that <laughs> do this. And of course, we'll have an affiliate link so you can buy your tickets to the Rise of Skywalker and help out coffee with Kenobi too. I mean, we can't forget that now, can no, we? Really? Not at all. <laughs> but that's that's very encouraging stuff. And the cool thing, Tom, about all those different environments you're talking about, mm-hmm. well, it certainly looks like Yavin or Hoth or something like that. I have a feeling that they aren't. Right. It'll be new stuff, undoubtedly. Tell you mm-hmm. what, let's go ahead and take a break because we haven't even scratched the surface of the Rise of Skywalker. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio, featuring sound effects, top-notch narrators, and music directly from the movies. Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From Luke Skywalker to Kylo Ren to Admiral Akbar, you'll recognize all of your favorite characters. Listen to brand new stories in the Star Wars universe like Thrawn Treason by Timothy Zahn. Can't make it to Galaxy's Edge this year? Just listen to Galaxy's Edge Black Spire by Delilah S. Dawson and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge A Crash of Fate by Zareta Cordova. With Star Wars audiobooks, you'll have plenty of Star Wars listening to keep you entertained. Available wherever audiobooks are sold. Speaking of Galaxy's Edge, I want to recommend for you MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Their signature service and expert advice will help clients maximize their vacation time and dollar. Their no cost, no obligation quote when you use the service is totally amazing. It's helped me a lot. And they also proactively adjust a booking if the rate goes down. So they're going to save you some money as well. So they're going to save you money and they're going to help your family enjoy everything Galaxy's Edge and the Disney theme parks and the cruise lines have to offer. Seriously, they're going to plan every detail for you, we'll help you all along the way, and can share invaluable tips. Be sure to go to our affiliate link, which can be found in the show notes on the front of our webpage or on our Twitter feed, and sign up for a free, no obligation quote. You'll have the best vacation possible and help out Coffee with Kenobi in the process. Speaking of helping out Coffee with Kenobi in the process, I want to bring in Tom for this because we need to talk about our CWK Patreon show. Yeah. CWK Prover and our CWK Amazing Patreon contributors. So let's give them a special shout out. I'm talking about Jason Hall, Dennis Keithley, David Nicely, Jeff Ellis, Colby Mead, Yancey Evans, Ross Halliban, Frank Mulder, Alexander Moylan, Melinda Wolf, 
Aaron Harris, Chris Kavarka, Angela Sauce, Alex Procaccio, Tim Van Swole, Ian Thompson, Rebecca Raven, Simbot Defterdarian, Christine Turk, Sean Reed, Kurt McKellen, Dan Ream, Brian Harding, Blake Weaver, Jim Caprin, Caroline Maselli, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Brian McKinney, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter. Tom, I mean, that that's an <laughs> incredible amount of support. Uh, and, yeah. and it's amazing because they do so much for our show, as Corey mm-hmm. said on a recent CWK Prover. They'll keep the hyperdrive running in the coffee with community <laughs> studios. And they are right. They, we are allowed to get much more coaxium because of their generosity. But your contributions also, as we said, give you access to our weekly show. It comes out every Sunday, CWK Pour Over. And, and again, thanks to each and every one of you. Because of that, you get access to CWK Pour Over, CWK Lens, which is some, some videos and pictures and behind-the-scenes stuff. And, of course, there's T-shirts, coffee mugs, and so much more. Perhaps most importantly, however, 10% of your monthly donations are donated directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. If you have any questions, go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi and sign up today or reach out to me, Dan Z at coffee with and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much. We are back talking about the final trailer for the Skywalker Saga, The Rise of Skywalker. And I know, Tom, you and I, for show 300, it had kind of a moment where it really sort of hit us. And I had that in my mind the entire time while I was watching this one mm-hmm. and how much I couldn't wait to share it with my family and friends because it just means so much to us. And I think that's why I liked all the Easter eggs that you talked about. I just tweeted out an image at the time of this recording of all those ships that you talked about, so feel free to check those out and see if you notice anything. But uh, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, I will lament a little bit that earlier in the day there was a 15 second preview and a number of people took an image of the falcon and what looked like the ghost below it and i saw that already i would have liked to have waited until i saw the trailer you know to not have that part spoiled for me but quite honestly that's you know that's fair i mean everybody is excited they screen capture and they put those up there i know better i should have stayed offline in fact, I texted you guys and said, I'm going to go cold <laughs> and I'm going yeah. back until I actually watch this thing, which is why I put my phone on airplane mode. But seeing the ghost there and potentially mm. the Colossus and all the other images and vehicles behind the Falcon is very inspiring and exciting. It's going to make the inner return of the Jedi look very micro, apparently, compared <laughs> to what we're about to witness. Remember that, when that scene blew us away the first time we saw it, especially oh, yeah. the trailer for Jedi. Yeah. And now we've got it in a whole new way. Uh I mentioned the Emperor's Throne. Did you notice when C-3PO was talking, when they first have a close-up of him, over his left shoulder is a battle droid, a deactivated battle droid. Is that right? From oh, the- I, didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, which is really cool. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff like that in the background there as well. It all Again, it all ties into the visuals. I'm uh-huh. sure there are a number of other Easter eggs. I, I was wondering what that helmet was that Ray drops at the beginning, and first I thought it was an an X-Wing pilot went helmet, but now that I look at it, it almost looks like one of the helmets for the Rebel Commandos on Endor. Mm. Of course, the odds are good. It's probably neither of those things. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, even the images I have don't really show that as well. But man, it's just a, a visual feat. And, and, and really, if you listen to this thing on Surround Sound, the soundtrack on this thing, besides the music, the mm-hmm. effects, I mean, they it's it's just a, it's just gorgeous. It's a piece of art. Mm-hmm. So speaking of pieces of art, uh, my last and final one is is something just uh, that I just captured with my eyes. I was just the whole thing looked looked fabulous. I mean, like you mentioned, Dan, the the visuals are just stunning. Uh, the planets, uh, the locations, the characters are all unique. Uh, I love the fact that like we get a mix of like people riding horses, but like you know, flying ships uh, and you know, all our characters are back. You know, it, just, it seems like it's just like, this is just going to be the film that really, I think, hits hard uh, for our, for us and really makes us cement as fans in, in, in general for this, this franchise. Um, it, oh, I think uh, overall, they've done a good job of keeping things feeling like Star Wars. I'm, the visuals are very much... 
uh, bright and colored There's, with the dark motifs, the light motifs, the shadows, the you know, the the play on uh, just you know who which character you're looking at. Well, you mentioned Kyle Ren walking out of the ship under the water and all wet, but that just shows his his heaviness of the what he's carrying with him. You know, he's drenched from. I mean, he's just soaked. That just shows me that like he is just soaked to the bone of, with darkness, maybe in his heart. And that's just in our visual cue that just is done so beautifully in Star Wars. But I want to pick up on one more thing we haven't even mentioned at all. Maybe this is, you guys can stop me if you don't want to talk about this. But they also released the uh, uh, the latest Star Wars Rise of Skywalker poster. Oh, I was going to um, say that for the end. Yeah. Oh, oh we're okay. There. Well, we're in there with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess going off the visuals, uh, this is to me the best looking poster I've seen uh, of the the three most recent films. So it's absolutely stunning and i think coming off the trailer and then i had seen the i went online finally i can kind of release myself to go online and look at things uh i came across the poster and that was just such a nice uh comparison piece it really captures this the 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 framing of this uh this trailer and where this movie is going and what it, you know what these characters are going to be headed for so I think all in all, I, this is going to be an exciting film. I think we're going to be very, uh, uh, um, you know, astounded by what's going to happen in, in the characters. And uh, I don't, I'm almost like a loss for words now that we've talked about this. I feel like it's just going to be something that we're going, going to be really shocked with. I think something that we're going to really kind of, uh, uh, I don't know what to say, like just basically uh, come out of those of theater feeling uh such a, a feeling of of such great joy i think in, in the essence of just of the film itself i think there's gonna be a lot of joy um just with this this movie you mentioned the music and the rise kind of coming out of that and this these moments happening there's such, there's a lot of joy in this trailer i think that there's these these kind of bracing we see we hear leia leia's voice last at the end uh and that's just such a great homage to to her carrie fisher as a character uh, in this series and just all all around, I think they're going to just really uh, give us the treat we're waiting for. Tom, what is your last one? Yeah, um, Corey, you kind of... I rambled. I should, I should just, <laughs> no, yeah, I should just piggyback off of you because I was going sure. to do kind of a final uh, impression. Um, but so you, you both have mentioned how um, Carrie Fisher has the last word. Is it, does Luke say, may the force be with you and then Leia says always. That's right. Is that what I heard? I okay. thought it, yes. I thought it was uh, Luke says something like the Force will always with you, and she force says forever. forever. No, the Force she says, she says always. Oh, always. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So um, I don't know. We we've talked so many times about, and Corey, you mentioned earlier about you know this is gonna this is it. Um, like it's it's the end of the story. And I've talked about on, uh, I know pour over and maybe here in coffee with Kenobi as well, that when I, when I'm reading a book and I'm so invested in the characters and the story and the, and everything that goes with it, like I, I kind of, I, I delay, I delay finishing it because I don't, I don't want to close the back of the book and be done and have that like loss of connection to the characters and this trailer, it's so epic. And it's so, I don't know, I found myself losing the faces of the people as I was watching this because I yeah. was so wrapped up in the action and the music and the settings. And I, I found myself, except for, as Dan, you mentioned, they slowed it down for the 3PO moments. That's the only time I really feel like I saw the faces of these characters that we love, some from the very beginning, some from halfway through the story, and some of them are brand new. And I just, I hope that when I watch this movie, that I do take time. And we'll have to, you'll have to remind me of this in two months. <laughs> when we, I want to make sure that I'm seeing the characters and that I'm seeing the faces and I don't get wrapped up in in the action and the special effects and the soundtrack and all of that, because what I will be disappointed in is when that final, those, those credits start going and we all sit back in our seats and we've all been there. We've been, we've been done this many times and we go, wow, what did I just experience? I hope that when I'm done with that, it's not, 
what? Like, who did I just see? Like, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I guess when I, when I close the book, I hope that they all stay with me. No, I know. I know. I like that. That's a great way to put it, Tom. Aren't we keeping so many we're just wow. checking boxes in our brains when we see this thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, my last one is the use of the emperor in this. The only time we see him is is very, very much aside from the back. All you see is a black cloak. It's very muted. You really can't tell uh, what's going on. You can't see his face. And behind him, it almost looks like he's got some sort of an apparatus that's holding him up, kind of like Silence of the Lambs. But I kind of doubt that he's restrained. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. if he's you know physically injured, if this is the actual emperor from the end of Return of the Jedi, maybe this is how he's able to to rise and to stare at Rey. Of course, he's literally above her because that's what the emperor would do. Because he probably thinks he definitely thinks he's better than everyone else. He has the high ground. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And so he's staring down like that, and I'm looking at the markings in the snow. I guess it's snow of her looking up at him. That's all we get, and we get that ominous quote that we talked about earlier about you two came together. So, of course, we're thinking, well, who are the two that he's talking about? You know, is it Ray and Kylo? Is it Ray and someone else? It's hard to say. So that is interesting. That kind of sticks out in your mind. And you know what I really, really love about this? Zero Dark Ray. There's no, we don't even know if that's her name. Yeah. Uh, I, think. I forgot that about that, actually. Oh, and I'm so happy about that. I mean, I wish they kind of saved that and didn't put it in the D23 Expo trailer, although obviously it created a lot of buzz and fun for us for a while. But it's not in there, which means we've got so many surprises waiting for us. Again, hats off right. to JJ. And at first, like I said, I was a little conflicted. And I'm like, Come on, you haven't given me anything. I still got to wait two months. But now I'm like, wait, I get to wait two months and I still don't know anything. It's kind of unprecedented in trailers. Besides Endgame, you can't only really think of too many trailers of the past 10 years that didn't pretty much give you the whole plot of the movie or some of the best jokes or mm-hmm. some hints of the action sequences, but it kind of has a, an epic return of the Jedi feel, mm. you know, kicked up a notch and I applaud it. I, I think it's, it is staggering and I'm sure as you know, even after we stop recording tonight and we think about it a little bit more and read what other people have thought and listen to our, to our CWK family members and what they have to say. My goodness, we're going to have plenty to talk about. And again, we don't know anything. Huh. I love that. I love it that way. It's my favorite part. Me too. Me too. So you guys are both going to watch it again. Is that what I'm hearing? I might watch it one more time just to cue up what we've talked about uh, tonight and just to... And I'll say I did it one more time, I guess, because just to, I know there's certain things I'm, I i do not want to, like you said, Dan, I want to overdo it, but also want to, I want to take it, take in things that maybe I missed along the way, but I think that'll be maybe one more time for me. Well, I guess to be fair, I will watch it one more time when I show it to Mason. Oh, there oh, you go. That's for yeah. sure. I mean, I have to do that. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I, I don't think I'll just watch it randomly for the sake of watching it. I think I, I'll let it, I'll, you know, I'll let it simmer. And that's as good, things yeah. come, as things come to my mind, I may go back to it. I've done that from time to time with the original and the sizzle, tra- sizzle, sizzle, sizzle that trailer from D twenty three. Another one. Uh, yeah. um, and yeah, you know, there'll, there'll be times of like, oh, what was that 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 happened? And I just have to go back and just rewatch it for that mm-hmm. purpose. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I agree. You can overdo it, and uh, and so we we do have to be careful of that. So, Mindful. We have to practice Jedi mindfulness. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. So overall, um, 10 being the best thing that ever happened to Star Wars, one being uh, no thanks. What kind of number, what kind of number grade, not letter grade, but what number, one to 10, do you give this? Oh, boy. That's tough. It is tough. Do you letter grade or number grade? A number. number one through seven grade. grade. Yeah, one you said letter grade, but... Um, Boy, I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna go an eight. Okay. Hmm. Care to expand on why? Yeah, I mean, you said 
Ted being the greatest. And uh, I mean, I've seen other better Star Wars trailers. You mentioned Phantom Menace, and I, I look, I think back to Phantom Menace, and I do, I did like Phantom Menace a lot. I remember rewatching that a lot as a kid. And that was kind of like when the uh, um, internet was kind of just taken off, and when you could watch videos over and over again and pause them. And you know, I remember that that opening scene with Darth Maul is kind of shown and I'm just we're freaking out going what in the world and just because again it's just that hypes you up and I, I like Force Awakens a lot because uh, it kind of reignited that same feeling uh, but for this I mean it was a great trailer I I, um, I think it was even I would even I'm even grading it higher because we didn't get a lot out of it I like it that way I, I'm okay with that so um, it still teased us it still got us excited got us talking about new things um, and definitely piqued my interest but um, I've seen better, so I'm um, gonna keep it there at an eight. All right, Tom. Probably a two. That's what I'm thinking. Uh huh. No, oh, that's crazy. Wow. That's crazy talk. <laughs> um, no, I, in all uh, in all seriousness, um, see, I was I was shooting for a nine. Um, I don't know that I could I could top. I don't know the trailer for Force Awakens just captured my imagination. And gave us so much new. And so maybe it's situational instead of the trailer itself. But uh, but so I, I'm going to put it in that realm because they put – he this trailer has so much in it for us to think about, for us to see. Um, I'd probably give it a 10 except for that last moment that I just mentioned where like I, the trailer was over and I kind of thought, ah, I, was Kylo Ren in that? You know, I just – there were so many things that I, I feel like I, I missed because it was so full of just greatness, but I lost the characters in it. So, so yeah, right. I, I, wonderful, wonderful. I, <laughs> a nine is like spectacular. I'm going to give it, I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to give it eight and a half. Uh, I think okay. I would have given it higher. I think uh, the C3PO moment was, was beautiful and poignant, but it kind of interrupted the rhythm of this, I think it would have been more effective if we got the title card, Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker, and then <clears throat> close it out with that C-3PO moment. I think that would have been more emotionally impactful, mm. and uh, would have kept the 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 breakneck pace of all these quick visuals. You know, at a, I mean, how about by the way, speaking of visuals, how about that Star Destroyer rising out of the water too? Oh, yeah. oh that was cool. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that, or like it looked like some sort of a like those skiffs. That they had on Scarif, not on Scarif. Oh yeah, but on um, Crate. And on it was Crate, definitely yeah. a different looking one, but we're similar in design. Or how about that planet that was like an ice planet? The Tie Fighters were flying into it was like upside down, kind of. Yeah, like that a visual. That was really cool. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if that was a, if it was a reflection. If it's oh. sitting on like an icy planet, and that's like a I don't know, it looked like a reflection to me. But then I was mm. like, I went back and I thought. Well, the Tie Fighters are on flying in that half of it or not? I, sure. So you know that's the kind of thing I'll go back and watch eventually. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, and that I mean, gosh, the uh, these images of Ray and Kylo smashing that unusual black statue, statue I guess, or had a structure. Or earlier. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> so many head scratching things. Before we close this out, though, let's talk about the poster. All right, yeah, Mr. yeah. what you got? Wow, I love this poster. I love it so much. I, I saw it come up on Twitter uh, when Star Wars posted it, and um, there I'm looking at it right now. It is really cool looking. Uh, it reminds me of the Force Awakens poster of of um, is it Force Awakens? Yeah, when Ray's holding the is she holding that. I don't. I'll go back and look at it now. It reminds me of the other. So there's a similar poster of her holding the the lightsaber that way, kind of. Um, and it's she's kind of dividing the picture. She kind of had this thing going on, but she's very confident looking. Uh, and it, it's always I feel like she is just um, totally like growing and, and maturing through her, her her skills and her character. But then we got all a bunch of other characters going on here. There's some action going on down below, and uh, it's it's very cool looking. I, I it's just really the blues and the reds are nice. Uh, I, I, my favorite part I think about though, they've got this white border around the whole thing and that just really looks good. I think <laughs> that really looks sharp. <laughs> they could have gone all black on that and really pushed everything back and made it really feel dark. But I think the, 
the white water gives us some hope uh, surrounding everything. I think that's what the I would have played on. Um, I like the idea of, of surrounding everything in like this white goodness, uh, if you will. I think that's a cool way to put it. Um, there's a lot going on this on this, tra- on this poster. I think I'd love to find a copy of it somewhere and and have it hanging in my office. Oh, I can't agree with you more. This is definitely a poster that I want to get my hands on. I don't have a lot of the movie posters, but this one is so cool. So first, n- number one, it's beautiful. Number two, it is so upsetting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why? There, yeah, are, there are bad things in the blue and good things in the red. Number two, Ray is, Ray's neck is surrounded by lightsabers. That is so disturbing to me. Oh, like Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. Yes, thank you. That huh. so, so so like that. There's good and bad, and bad and good in this. Um, is is and then when I say upsetting, I don't mean. I, I just mean like visually, I'm upset that there's star destroyers on the blue side, and that there's a an X wing over on the red side. Um, but uh, but okay. So one other thing that I think is really cool, and you're gonna have to help me with the name. The is it Zori Bliss who's got the two pistols? I believe so. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. That's like Boba Fett and Empire Strikes Back right there. She looks so cool standing there with those two pistols sticking straight <laughs> out. Um, but uh, and then of course at the top, uh, splitting the middle is our favorite character, the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, I love that. Character. I love that. I really. <laughs> you know hey, i can't on. talk as much that's smart thinking on your part yeah. yeah you're welcome but no i think this is this is magnificent and Corey, i really appreciate your your comments about the white border i i i there was something about this poster and i wasn't sure what it is or what it was but now that you say that that yeah i love that the how the border just encapsulates it all into like a memory book well it's like um it's like the original star wars poster is what it is like the, the b yeah poster. it definitely has like a, a yeah it's vintage exactly feel. what it looks like yep the white border and then emphasizes it this is another one of those uh, what is this like how, how do you describe the style of this it's all fo- i mean it's i mean it's not photoshop but what is it photorealistic or how do you describe oh, yeah, it yeah photorealistic they're photos they're using photos um so I mean, it's all still images they're posing for. I mean, as as much as I think it's cool and breathtaking because it is, it's it's just another hodgepodge of of sequences. It doesn't really tell a story. Mm. Uh, for the third Skywalker film in a row, I like the teaser poster better than the final one. So you like the one with the Emperor's face? That one, yeah, yep, okay. with Ray and Kylo on that precipice. Yeah, that we got D twenty three. And by the way, What's in the poster. There too? Yeah, it is on the bottom. But there's no emperor in this poster. Is that yeah, interesting? and no Leia. Oh, oh yeah, that's a little disappointing. Yeah, I just realized that there's no that Leia. Might be, that might be by design, though. Who knows? Hmm. She's the Millennium Falcon for sure. She's flying it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> very, that very well could be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you man. <laughs> well, guys, away. <laughs> that's right. Speaking of tickets, we all got our tickets for... Ooh. December 19th at 6 o'clock at the Sir. Peoria Riverfront Museum. So we're very, yes. very excited about that. More to come on that very, very soon. But in the meantime, gentlemen, anything you want to add to our conversation of this trailer before we wrap up? I have one more thing to add. And uh, we mentioned this kind of just going into this trailer um, and just kind of going dark. We always talk about this going dark thing. This is, I think this is my, I'm, I'm going dark. I'm not going to try and get on social media. I know people will break this trailer down a million times over and, and find things that I they don't want to see, but you know, particularly want to. But I'm gonna try and go as, as quiet as I can, uh, and and just okay, this is it. This is the moment I'm gonna pick. Uh, I've seen enough. Um, like I said, I'll probably watch it one more time here, um, and and that's gonna be it for me. I mean, uh, I'm excited to see the movie. I, we've like I said, we've got our tickets. I'm ready to sit down in the, in the theater and and watch. I'm ready to go. Wow. All right. Can I bring up a just a light and fun piece of this of Please. this trailer that Yeah, go for it. My, my daughter and I just we just kind of laughed and chuckled and just enjoyed and we wound and watched it again. Um, <laughs> in, the, in the Force Awakens trailer when we were introduced to BB-8, he was just cruising along. Do you remember that scene? He yeah. Just, He's just bumping along and going. Oh, yeah. So in this one, I don't know if you noticed when they're riding the horses, 
Uh-huh. Did you see BB-8 was in the fore- foreground? Just, cr- I mean, flying <laughs> going right along with them, and just <laughs> we just we just found that to be, uh, I don't awesome. know, amusing, and it just, it was it just made us laugh, it made us smile. No, I agree. I agree. Huh, I did not notice that. He was he was on his horse, as they say. <laughs> he was. He what? They might have been trotting, but man, his his little ball was just a spin. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Really, really cool. Now, I can't think of anything else to add other than I'm just looking forward to seeing how I feel in 24 hours and 48 hours in a week, in a month. Yeah. You know, when I'm sitting in the theater and, and what's going to stick with me. Can't wait to see what my kids think about it and, yeah. and what they bring to the table because there's a lot of great stuff to discuss. It's always great and we can't do a thing like this without having the 18 months. So, Corey, let everybody know. They can reach out to you and ask you questions about what you thought about this movie or trailer, I should say. Not movie. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you guys think on Twitter. I'll try to respond if I'm not um, staying away. Going uh, my Going dark. Yeah. On Twitter at Corey Club. Or if you want to send me a secretive email um, and tell me what you think about your favorite part of this trailer, we'd love to hear it. Uh, email me, Corey C at CoffeeWithKenobi.com. And what about you, Mr. Gross? Yes, uh, on Twitter, um, at DraftLine, D-R-A-F-T-L-I-N-E. Um, or send me an email with your thoughts or questions. Uh, if you ask me a question, I don't know if I'll be able to give you a firm answer, but I would be happy to discuss with you. Uh, you could drop me that email, tomg at coffeeiskenobi.com. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio, featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies. Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From brand new audiobooks such as Galaxy's Edge, Black Spire, and Star Wars Myths and Fables, to our blockbuster movie tie-in editions, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Start listening wherever audiobooks are sold.